remember Johnny and Blinn and the whole family. I know the Lord's got, got them in the palm of His hand. And, and you know, uh, but you know, the Bible tells us, you know, when we pray for people, we need to pray for them with our hearts. And we need to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ just like we're praying for one of our family because they are our family. And praise the Lord. I, Johnny's been on my heart all evening. But uh, y'all say a little prayer for me because... Uh, I want to rely on the Lord because it's going to be the Lord doing it. Because it's that's the reason the Bible says to always be prepared in season and out of season. So I do this for the Lord. I don't do it to be be heard because I'm the dirt that I that you walk on. I'm the only thing good about me is the fact that I love Jesus. We can preach on what you did on Sunday here because we wouldn't even know what to preach. I know. So we we'll just praise the Lord. Well, I'll be preaching tonight, if it's Lord's will, out of Matthew chapter 16, starting with verse 21 through 26. When y'all get there, just say amen or praise the Lord. Matthew 16, starting with verse 21 through 26. Praise the Lord. Matthew 16. Verse 21 through 26. I'm in no hurry. We got all night. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. We're blessed. We can come in His house and we can praise Him every single day, can't we? Are we there? All right. I'll go ahead and read. It says... From that time forth began, began, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou saveth not the things that be of God, but those that of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man to profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man giveth in exchange for his soul? I'll pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, just for the privilege of being able to stand up here and, and preach your word, Lord. I thank you for your many, many blessings, Father God. And Lord, I thank you most of all for your son Jesus who came and died on the cross was raised again in three days so people like us can be saved, Father God. And Lord, I pray and ask that you just stand beside of me, Lord, and the word said here tonight would be the word you'd have me to say, Father God. And Lord, I pray for Johnny and his whole family, Lord, that you just please just keep them in the palm of your hand, Father God, and Lord, and give them just the peace and the comfort, Lord, and bring them through every bit of this, Father God. Lord, and I pray all these things in the name of your son Jesus, and amen. In verse 21, it says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem. The, the, the phrase, from this time forward, marks a turning point. In, in uh, Matthew 4, 17, it signals Jesus' announcement of the kingdom of heaven. And you know, in verse 22, it says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You know, and I got to think of when I started studying this here, you know, the world always tries to take us, take us to the side and rebuke us because we're going to do something for the Lord. And you know, that's just like with Peter right here. He, he loved Jesus. He didn't want nothing bad to happen to him. But yet, if Jesus hadn't went and died on the cross and was raised again in three days, Peter wouldn't be saved. Not one of us in here would be saved. So you know, when I announced my calling to preach, you wouldn't believe how many people, my brothers and sisters in Christ would tell me, Paul, that's a big responsibility. You, you're going to have to forsake everything hunting fishing whatever but you know by the grace of God I forsake this whole life this life this world has done nothing for me but Jesus done it all he pulled my soul out of the gates of hell and you know he gave me 
Praise the Lord. You know, we can praise the Lord. And you know, it's like I tell them, wherever I'm blessed or preached, don't get me wrong, I ran for the Lord for a long time. Me and Will was just talking a while ago. I ran from Him for oh, many years. And when I lost my daddy, I guess it was something inside of me broke. And I said, Lord, I'm done. I quit running. I'm not a good speaker. But I, what I want to do, I want to do for you. Lord, because there's, we're living in a lost and dying world. Oh, Lord, I like getting tore up. I like getting tore up for Jesus. You know, each and every one of us in here, I believe, is saved tonight. And, you know, we should get tore up for Jesus. There's not one reason we shouldn't get tore up. But you wouldn't believe the people that came and told me all different things. Lord, Paul, oh, it's going to be tough. It's going to do this. And believe me, it's going to be tough. But, you know, Jesus, the first sermon I ever preached, I, I quoted out of Jeremiah chapter 1. Jer he told Jeremiah, he said, go out and talk to him. He said, I'll put the word in your mouth. And Jeremiah said, I can't do it. He said, I'll stand beside of you. So every time that I get up here or go anywhere to do anything for the Lord, I say, Lord, please, I can't do this for myself. You have to stand beside of me. And he does. He physically comes and holds me up by the belt loop so I can tell somebody about him. And you know, when we come into his house, we don't need to sit on our hands. We can praise him. I know we all praise him in our own way, but you know, it don't, it's not bad for us to hold our hands up and say, praise you, Lord, because years I sat back there in that pew, felt like I was going to blow apart when I hear somebody preaching. But you know, I was so scared. But you know, fear comes from the pits of hell. It's the devil telling you. It's it's just like the devil was using Peter right here to tell Jesus, no, you can't do that. I remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, my mom came to me. She said, Dave, Lord, I, I wish you'd never put that gun to your head. I said, Mommy, don't even say that. I said, because if I hadn't had that gun to my head, I would have never come to know Jesus. So, you know, that's why I give Him all the praise and all the glory. Even the mountaintops is wonderful, but the valleys are better because that's when we look up at Him. If it weren't for the valleys, we'd never have no need for Jesus. And you know, whew. All right. We can praise the Lord now. In verse 23, I was going to try to keep this straight, but I have a hard time keeping it straight when I get talking about the Lord. In verse 23 it says, But in turn, and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou sayest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So you know, when somebody's telling you that you can't do this, can't do that for the Lord, it's not them speaking. It's the devil speaking through them. Just like Peter was speaking through, or the Satan was speaking through Peter against Jesus because Satan already knew what God was going or Jesus was going to do. He knew that he was going to come and die on the cross so everybody would have an opportunity to go to heaven. You know, each day we live, we're another day, another second closer to heaven. So, you know, praise the Lord. And what Johnny and Belinda and them's going through up there tonight, you know, I know that's a hard thing. But, you know, God is in it. God is in it, and I, I know with everything in me that God will pull them through it. Don always tells me every time I get up to preach, she says, the Lord brought you to it, and He's going to pull you through it. And I believe that. I believe that with each and every one of us as Christians. Because, you know, He didn't save us not to pull us through things. He saved us, and the only thing He asked us to do was go out to this world and tell somebody about Him. And I know sometimes that's scary. Believe me, I've been scared to death before standing up and preaching. But, you know, I don't do it for, for myself. I, don't, I do it for Jesus. He asked me to do it. So I'm going to do it if it kills me. And, you know, fear... Fear is nothing more than worry. And the devil uses every bit of that to keep people from doing things they need to do for the Lord. In verse 24 it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And you know, when, when you announce you're going to do anything for the Lord, whether it be teach Sunday school or preach or whatever you're going to do, we got to deny ourselves. You know, we can go home and turn the TV on. We don't have no problem sitting down and watching it, but it is so hard for us to go and do anything for the Lord. But you know, we did need to deny this world. This world has done absolutely nothing for us. But Jesus has done it all. Jesus has given us a way to go to heaven, to be with Him and our loved ones. You think about that. So, you know, if we believe in heaven with every fiber in our bodies, 
we shouldn't be sad because we're going to a better place. The Bible says there will be no more tears, no more sickness. You know, I look forward to heaven every single day of my life. But you know, heaven can be right here with us right now tonight because Jesus is with us. And you know, when we come into His house, we need to come into His house to give Him praise and glory. We come here to worship. We don't come here to do nothing else but worship Him and fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, we go to church, we need to go to praise Him. We don't go to, we can be sad all day long. The world wants us to be sad. But you know, we're Christians. We should be happy people because we're saved and we're going to heaven. Yeah, we'll have to go through, we'll have to go through death. But you know, praise the Lord, we get to go through it to go see our Jesus. Just imagine what it's going to be like when we actually get face to face with Him. Like that song, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what it's going to be like when I get in front of Jesus. And you know, whoo. I love you all. Thank you all for the privilege of being able to stand up here and, and, and preach about the only thing that, the thing that helped me get through this world was Jesus. You know, when, when I did have a gun to my head and when I was getting ready to pull that trigger, he put his hand in between that gun and my, my head. And, you know, by doing that, I believe with everything in me that when he did that, I was saved right there because his mercy came through the walls to save me. I've said that a million times, and I'll probably say it more if the Lord keeps me on this earth. But, you know, as long as I'm on this earth, I want to do what he wants me to do. And, you know, like I said when I, when I announced my calling to preach, I said, Lord, here I am. I'm not worried. I'm not a good speaker, but I want to be used by you. And if I'm not going to be used by you, set me down, Lord, because if it gets about me, I don't want to do it no more. I want to do it for Jesus. I told Don, I love you, fellas. And I'm not going to apologize for getting tore up. I can get tore up about Jesus. We all can. I love that shirt, Team Jesus. Jesus, He got me through this world, and He'll get me through the other world. This thing, eternity. We each and every one get to live eternity with Jesus in heaven. So give Him all the praise and all the glory. Verse 24, I'm going to read it again. Then said Jesus unto His disciples, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow Me. So, you know, that is such a privilege, knowing that the Creator of the universe reached down to save each and every one of us in here. And the only thing He asked us to do was go out to a lost and dying world. Not to do anything else, not to do flip-flops or whatever, but to just go out and tell somebody about Jesus. And you know, you have a hard time anymore, it seems like, getting people to come to church, especially on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights or whatever. And you know, this is the symbol of God in the world. If you tell me you love Jesus and you don't want to come to church, there's something wrong. Because this is His house. This is the symbol. You can go out and you don't hardly see nothing about Jesus, but you can go by a church and what's the first thing you think of? You think of God. You think of Jesus. So this is His house. This is the symbol of Him. We should. The churches should be full. I remember when I was growing up, and then it's been... About 40 years ago now, when I, but I remember in the 70s, the little church down below my house on, on Sunday mornings, they'd even have church once, once a, a Saturday, once a month on Saturday, but it would be full. Both sides of the road would be full, and now you can't hardly get nobody hardly to come to church. And you know, even, even Christians, I, I work with several people that they're Christians, but they'll come to church on Sunday morning. And I'm not judging nobody. But all I'm saying is, you know, in the day we live in, there's evil everywhere. There's people dying and going to hell everywhere we look. We need to be on fire for the Lord. And you know, Zeke always preaches and, and, and talks about how he'd love to see all the churches to come together, all the Christians come together. That's one of the prayers from, for me. And I, I pray for a great spiritual revival. Not just a revival of the church, but a spiritual revival for us as Christians to get on fire for the Lord. You know, for the Lord to reach down and just touch our hearts and catch our hearts on fire for Him again. So you know, that's my prayer. For us to get on on far for the Lord and for people to know that we're serious about Jesus. Because, you know, when we tell somebody we're a Christian, they shouldn't we should be happy to tell them that. You know, when somebody asks us how we're doing, we should say we're blessed. No matter if we're in the middle of the worst thing going on in the world, we're still blessed people. And you know, as long as we live this life, it's going to be 
there's going to be bad things happen. But you know, Jesus is in the middle of it all. I know He's taught me that, and I know He's taught each and every one of us in here that. Because when we come to Him, we come to Him with a broken heart. And you know, He reached down, He touched my heart. And I thank God for that. In verse 25, it says, More, more so ever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So that's just telling us, you know, if somebody come in here tonight with a gun and mowed every one of us down, praise the Lord, we're all going home to heaven. And, you know, I think about that a whole lot because in the world we live in, I hear just on the news last night, <clears throat> in several of these third world countries, they're starting cutting he uh, Christians' heads off again and stuff. But, you know, it's really never stopped. It just seems like we're where we live at, we don't get to see a lot of it, but I can tell you this, as long as we live this life, and as long as Jesus allows us to stand here, it's going to come here. It's going to, and it might not be with a sword, but this, this country is going to try to keep our mouth shut about Jesus, I can tell you right now. But you know, I pray that they can, I wouldn't want to die for no other reason than my Lord, and I pray that I can stand for Him no matter what. In verse 26, it says, For what is a man to profit? He shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And you know, the world teaches that we, we need to have money, money, money. But you know, truthfully, the only thing that matters in the end is if we know Jesus. And you know, that's the first and foremost thing. But the, you know, the world wants to cover it up with everything else. And the devil... He's the main reason the world's doing that. He's, he's trying to cover everything about Jesus up. He's trying to tell you you have to have so much money to do this or so much money to do that. And the only thing we really have to have is Jesus. Because one thing about it, it's like I was talking to a fellow today. No matter what, death is going to come to us all unless the, unless the rapture comes now. But you know, we need to be a looking to Christ and we need to prepare to be still telling people about him instead of looking up because you know if it comes tonight praise the Lord if it don't come tonight praise the Lord we still can tell somebody else about Jesus <clears throat> it says for what a man is the prophet he shall gain the whole world so you know that's that happens every single day People want a million dollars. But once they get a million dollars, that million dollars ain't going to make them happy. You know, I, I tried a lot of different things in this world to be happy or to have peace. And if you think about it, a billionaire, if he's laying on his deathbed, he'd give every nickel he had just to have peace. I know my daddy, when he was laying on, well, three hours before he passed away, I know that he would probably have gave anything he had for just one minute of peace. And because when I first came in that morning, when, they, when the, a nurse called me and uh, I was at work and they asked me to come, my daddy was asking for me. And when I got there, my daddy was in the most pain that I'd ever seriously ever seen anybody in at that time. They'd already gave him two shots of morphine and he was still in tremendous pain. But the first, the last words my daddy said to me, he said, Dave, did you make it? I said, Daddy, I'm here. And he was in so much pain. But you know... The only thing I did, I pulled my cap off, I laid my hands on him, and I looked up and I said, Lord, please, I'm not asking you to save my daddy. I'm not asking you to heal my daddy. All I'm asking you is to give him peace. Please, Lord, just give him peace. And in 20 minutes, and it's nothing to me, this is what Jesus does for each and every one of us because we're his children. But in 20 minutes, my daddy was completely out of pain. And he lasted about three or three and a half more hours pain-free. So, you know, that is a God thing. And, you know, when we pray for people, it's just like when we pray for Johnny and, and his family up there. We need to pray for them, not with this. We need to pray with this. We need to pray with our hearts. And, you know, because believe me, they're, they're going to they're gonna have to have their prayers. Because when you go through things like that, the only thing that gets us through is prayers. I know when I lost... My mom and my dad, the only thing that got me through was the prayers of my brothers and sisters in Christ. When I lost my home, I didn't even have to pick up the phone. But the whole next day, my brothers and sisters in Christ was going in and out of our house without even me having to say a word. So, you know, that's a God thing. That's when we love each other. And, you know, I remember used to when I was growing up, 
neighbors would help neighbors. But you know, we as Christians, we should help each other. And no matter what's going on, if one of us is going through it, we're going through it. If Johnny and him's going through it up there, we're going through it right here. But the thing of it is, we got Jesus standing right beside us. And that should mean it all. Because that is the greatest comfort in this world. You can have a million dollars in the bank and you not have one ounce of comfort. I always look at Robin Williams. He... He probably had more money than anybody, any one of us will ever have. But you know, he wasn't happy. He took his own life. It happens every single day. There's people taking their life everywhere you look. I almost took mine, but praise the Lord. The Lord had other plans for me for right now. He might take me home tonight, and if he does, praise the Lord, I'm ready to go. Because I think about heaven every single day of my life. But you know, as Christians, we don't need to be sitting on our hands and letting the world go by. We need to get out there and tell people about the Lord. We, we need to get the church in gear. It's not just this church. Every church needs to get in gear. We need to get off our hands and, and get on our feet and start praising the Lord and telling people about Jesus because we're living in a, a world that people's dying and going to hell every single day, every single minute. They said a murder happens every 60 seconds in New York City. Can you imagine that? I can't. But I've never been there. Don's been there before, but I've never been there. A murder every 60 seconds. That's unreal. And they said Chicago is getting ready to surpass that. So if you think about that, think about how many of those people that's being killed don't even know Jesus. They're dying and going to hell. And you know, the thing of it is, I was coming home the other day from Elkhorn City, and I went by this little church, and it had a sign up, and I had to pull over and write it down so I could remember it. And I think I can remember it because I left it in another Bible. But anyway, it said, heaven or hell, the choice is yours. You can't stay here. So, you know, I thought that was really good, and it's really true. There's only two places. They're not purgatory. I know you have the Catholics teaching there's purgatory. That is straight from the pits of hell. That's hogwash. Only thing this Bible teaches right here, there's heaven or hell. And, you know, when you close your eyes in, a, in death, and if you don't know Jesus, you will open them up in hell, period. The Bible says that the angels carried Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. And, you know, this ain't Bible, but... I believe in my heart that when you die as lost, I believe demons will carry you to hell the same way. But you know, either way, I don't really want to know about hell. But I'm so thankful the angels is going to carry me into heaven. So, you know, I praise the Lord for that. And you know, when the morning my dad passed away, I noticed he was looking up in the corner of the room that whole morning. And I believe in my heart that Jesus was standing there with his hand open toward him. And you know... That gives me praise. We can praise Him. Thank God we can praise Him. There's nothing no better to praise. You know, we can go to a ball game and we can holler and hoop and there's nothing wrong with a ball game. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you can go to a ball game and scream your lungs out, you can come to church and scream your lungs out for Jesus. Because that is the most important thing. The rest of this garbage will... It'll just go away. But Jesus will always be there for you. He gets us through every single day. He gets me through every day. Every day I get up to stand up here to preach His Word and praise the Lord. It's a privilege for me to be able to do that. I always said, it's, yeah, it scares me to death to even think about getting up in front of people. But I need to put those fears aside because it ain't about me no more. It's about Jesus. And it's about getting out there and telling somebody about Him. It's not about us. So, you know, as Christians, we need to get off our hands and get on the roads out there and start telling people about the Lord, no matter what. We might not feel like it sometimes. We might have to give our lives for it. But so what? We're going to heaven. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Woo! I'm Ric Flair. <laughs> That's what somebody said one time. But anyway, <clears throat> there's a boy that I work with at one of the stores. And he's only 24 years old. And he told me, he said, Paul, he said, I don't believe in heaven. He said, I don't believe in a God. He said, I believe this is all the heaven anybody's ever going to get. He said, that's the reason I'm going to live it up and party it up. And when it's over, it's over. And, you know, I told him, I said, well, you better pray that you're right. And, you know, he looked at me like, but, you know, the thing of it is, and like I told him, 
Because when somebody tells me if they're an atheist or whatever, they should be able to explain to me why they're an atheist, and he can't do it. And I believe there's very, very few true atheists in this whole world. Because as soon as somebody tells you that they don't believe in God, they're already lying because they're acknowledging God. They've acknowledged that there's a God. So, you know, when we're born, I believe each and every one of us know whether we're whether we confess to be Christians or not, I believe we know that there's a higher being out there. I believe that with everything in me. So, you know, we need to give Him all the praise and all the glory all the time. And, you know, I, I've got one of my... He's a very good friend of mine. He's a Christian. And, you know, he's... Uh, it's just like when the devil used Peter here. And I'm not saying he's evil or anything. But, you know, if we allow ourselves to become more carnal-minded instead of spiritual-minded, we will start acting off things that the devil's wanting us to do. But he told me that I ought not do this. I ought not preach. He said, that's too much responsibility for you. He said, you know, you'll have to give up everything in your life to do that if you're going to do it truly for God. I said, well, Lord, here I am. You take it away because I don't have to give up nothing. That's what a lot of people tell me when I witness to them about the Lord. Well, one of these days when I get myself straight... I'll start going to church. I said, well, you'll never go. Because believe me, I didn't have to change a thing. The Lord changed it for me. And I thank God for that. I thank God that I love hearing good praise and worship music. Because, because you know, we can go out there. The world's waiting for us any time. But, you know, when we truly, I thank God. I thank God every day that I can be around godly, spiritual people. You know, no matter if you agree with everything they're talking about or not, at least we're talking about Jesus. It's better than being talking about the garbage that's going on out here in this world. And, you know, I, it's like that little boy, 24 years old. He said he drinks and swarps and whatever. And he asked me, he said, Paul, what's the Bible say about somebody that dies drunk? I said, well, I can tell you exactly what the Bible says about it. The Bible says that a drunkard will not inherit the kingdom of he heaven. And you know what I believe? I believe that. I'm a literal Bible taker. And I believe what it says, and I believe it says what it means. So, you know, that's what I told him. But everybody, they try to justify what they like to do, whether it be drinking, swarping, cussing, whatever. And you know, that's just like with cussing. I've heard good Christian people that go out and say some of the awfulest things ever was. And then they'll say, well, such and such said it, I'm just repeating it. That's a justification. And you know, when we do these things, believe me, we're saved. I believe once in grace, always in grace, because I don't think the Bible teaches anything else. But they will be re repercussions for our sin, especially, <clears throat> especially when we act like the world. And you know, as Christians, the Bible says for us to be a separated people, to come out from amongst the world and be different. And that's just like with all the politics and stuff going on. I've heard so many Christians get so caught up in that right there. Even, even with the Islamic thing, you know, where, and I, I heard one Christian say, he said, I wish they'd take every Muslim they are, and put them in a bottle and blow them up. And this guy was a confessing, he confessed to be a Christian. And I asked him, I said, do you think Jesus would do that? I said, because if he's going to blow all the Muslims up, he should have blown me up a long time ago. Because believe me, I'm no better. And you know, if he saved me, he can save any of them. He can save the worst person out there. I remember years ago, and I'm getting ready to close. I remember years ago when I was working at the Belfry Velocity, there used to be a fellow that came in over there uh, about once a week. And uh, he was a very bad feller. Uh, he lived in Wimpson over there, but he, he did a lot of bad things. And them boys, and I'd always try to talk to him about the Lord. And them boys always told me, said, ain't you afraid that he might try to have you killed or anything like that? I said, hey, if he has me killed, I'm just going on home to heaven. But you know, even if it takes my life, we need to tell somebody about Jesus. We need to say Jesus to somebody. And you know, it's just like with his shirt, it says Team Jesus. It's got the most powerful word in the whole world on the front of that shirt, Jesus. You can, you can be talking to the worst man in the whole world and mention Jesus. And I guarantee it'll quieten him down. It may be just for a minute, but it'll quieten him down. Because whether we confess to be Christians or not, that word has respect of this world. So, you know, we need to give it all the praise and all the glory. But as Christians, 
we need to, the picker crosses up and to follow him and say, Lord, here I am. Because believe me, if he can use a filthy rag like me, he can use anybody in here to do anything. And believe me, he will pull you to it. You just have to say, Lord, here it is. He'll take you places that you never thought you'd ever go because you'd say, Lord, there ain't no way I can do that. And they ain't. But Jesus is standing beside of me and I can do anything <laughs> through him. So anyway, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for how you listened. But you know, uh, 